Do you feel like you're working non-stop, but not making real progress? In today's fast-paced world, productivity is often measured by how much we do, how fast we do it, and how busy we seem. But, what if slowing down could actually help you achieve more? In this video, I'm going to dive into three principles of slow productivity, by Cal Newport. A method that helps you do less, but do it better. Let's get started. The first principle of slow productivity, is to do fewer things. This means, minimizing your commitments to a level, where you can clearly see yourself completing them without rushing or stress. By reducing the number of tasks you take on, you create the space to fully immerse yourself in what's important, enhancing both the depth and impact of your work. When we spread ourselves too thin by taking on too many responsibilities, we're not just adding more tasks. Each one comes with its own set of administrative tasks, like emails and meetings, that eat up our time. This creates a situation, where you're so caught up in managing these details, that you lose focus on meaningful work. Focusing on fewer tasks not only gives you more time, but also improves the quality of that time. It allows you to direct your energy more effectively, making those hours more productive and fulfilling. In the book, author mentions about Jane Austen, who was able to write her most famous novels, after she drastically simplified her personal responsibilities. During her earlier years, Austen was involved in many household duties, caring for family members, and attending to the demands of social life. It wasn't until her family moved to a quiet cottage in Chawton, where she was freed from most domestic chores, that Austen found the mental space and uninterrupted time, to immerse herself fully in her writing. By reducing her obligations, she unlocked her creative potential, and produced the literary masterpieces that still resonate today. Her example shows, how mental clarity and focus are amplified, when our responsibilities are reduced. Similarly, Andrew Wiles, the British mathematician who famously solved Fermat's last theorem, achieved his breakthrough, by dedicating himself exclusively to this one goal. Wiles retreated from the distractions of other professional, and academic demands, working in near isolation for years. He eliminated the typical commitments of collaborative work, teaching, and publishing papers. Instead, he chose to focus entirely on the elusive problem, that had puzzled mathematicians for over 350 years. Wiles' success wasn't just the result of talent and perseverance. It was the singular focus and mental clarity, that came from cutting away distractions, and narrowing his efforts to this one monumental task. In both cases, the key to their extraordinary success, is not adding more tasks to their schedules or working faster, but in removing distractions, and focusing deeply on what mattered most. The simplicity of their lives. To implement this, start by reviewing your current list of commitments. Cut back to a level, where you feel confident about completing everything without stress. Think about the hidden time costs of each task, whether it's additional communication or planning time. The more commitments you take on, the easier it is to fall into a cycle, where your workload grows out of control. Managing all the overhead activities eats up more and more of your day. It's important to understand that, doing fewer things doesn't mean getting less done. You're still putting in the same effort, but by reducing distractions and unnecessary obligations, you're able to channel that effort into what really matters. This way, you get better results, not just more of them. The second principle of slow productivity, is to work at a natural pace. Instead of constant busyness, this principle encourages working at a rhythm, that allows for varying levels of intensity. Working at a natural pace means, embracing periods of focused effort, balanced with moments of rest and reflection. Don't rush your most important work. Allow it to unfold naturally. A sustainable timeline, with variations in intensity, often leads to the most brilliant outcomes. In today's world, we're often conditioned to believe that if we're not busy every moment, we're not being productive. But, some of the most brilliant minds in history didn't rush their work. They took the time they needed, allowing their ideas to mature and develop over years, sometimes even decades. Working with unceasing intensity can seem productive, but in reality, it often prevents us from reaching our full potential. Consider the examples of Galileo and Newton. 
Galileo first observed the motion of pendulums in the 1580s, but it wasn't until decades later that he fully documented his findings. Newton too, began contemplating the laws of gravity in his early 20s, yet he only published his groundbreaking work on the subject over 20 years later. These scientists worked at their own pace, and their ideas changed the world. Working at a natural pace helps us think more deeply and make big breakthroughs, while constant busyness can actually hold us back. The urgency to be busy can cause us to rush through tasks. This causes us to miss opportunities for creative thinking, and exploring new ideas. Galileo, Newton, and many other great minds in history, who retreated to quiet places to recharge, exemplify, how slower, more deliberate work, can lead to impactful achievements. To apply this principle in your life, start by evaluating your current work schedule. Build in regular moments of rest, and reflection. Create a five-year plan for your major goals, giving yourself a broader timeline, to allow for natural progress. Another practical tip, is to double your estimated project timelines. This allows you to counteract unrealistic optimism, and allow yourself to work at a natural pace. This will help you maintain a sustainable pace, that supports creativity, and long-term productivity. Also, you can think of your work in terms of seasons. Some periods will be more intense, while others allow for relaxation and recharging. By working with these natural cycles, you can avoid burnout. Also, it ensures that you're focused, fully engaged, and able to give your best. For example, implementing small seasonal adjustments, like no meeting Mondays, can create a more gradual transition into the work week, providing dedicated time for focused, uninterrupted work. Remember, productivity doesn't have to mean relentless activity. By working at a natural pace, you create space for your best ideas to emerge, giving your work greater depth and meaning. Embrace a rhythm, that allows for both, focused effort and thoughtful reflection. The third principle of slow productivity, is to obsess over quality. In a world, that often values speed and quantity, this principle asks you to take a different approach. Focus on producing the best possible version of whatever you're working on, even if it takes more time. By concentrating on quality, you'll produce work that stands the test of time, rather than something that's quickly done but easily forgotten. Too often, we rush to check things off a list, or meet tight deadlines, sacrificing the depth and meaning of our work. But quality isn't just a luxury. It's essential for long-term success. When you focus on doing fewer things, but doing them extremely well, the value of your work increases. This can lead to more opportunities, greater satisfaction, and ultimately, more freedom in your professional life. The trade-off is short-term speed, but the reward is far greater in the long run, with more impactful results. Obsessing over quality means, be willing to slow down, resist the pressure to rush, and pour your energy into crafting something exceptional. One great example of this principle in action, is the story of Jewel, the singer and songwriter, who rose to fame in the 1990s. Early in her career, Jewel was offered a million-dollar bonus by a record label. For most young artists, this would have been a dream come true. But Jewel turned it down. Why? Because she realized that accepting the money, would force her to produce music quickly, in a way that prioritized immediate hits over the quality of her work. Instead, she chose to focus on honing her craft, and producing music that truly reflected her artistry. So, she missed the possibility of short-term success. By choosing quality over quick returns, Jewel set herself up for a long and successful career. Her decision to slow down and prioritize her music, allowed her to create something lasting. Instead of burning out early, or producing work that didn't align with her artistic vision. This story illustrates, how obsessing over quality can sometimes mean turning down opportunities. But it also means, gaining the freedom to produce work that truly matters. Now, how can you apply this principle to your own work? Think about the one project, where you can slow down and focus more on quality. Instead of rushing to complete it, give yourself extra time to refine it, review it, and improve it. Whether it's writing, designing, or building something, focus on making it the best it can be. This shift in mindset, from getting it done, to getting it done well, will pay off in the long run. Another way to obsess over quality is to improve your taste. 
As creative people, we often get into our fields, because we have a vision of what good work looks like. But it takes time and practice, to close the gap between your taste, and the quality of what you're producing. By continually pushing yourself to improve, and refine your work, you'll eventually reach a level, where your output matches your ambitions. By obsessing over quality, you're not just aiming for good enough, you're aiming for excellence. It may take longer, and you might have to turn down short-term opportunities, but the results will stand out. The rewards of high-quality work are always greater in the long run. By embracing these three principles, doing fewer things, working at a natural pace, and obsessing over quality, you can create space for deeper, more meaningful work. Rather than constantly striving to do more, slow productivity encourages you to do what's most important, and to do it well, leading to a more fulfilling and impactful life. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and like this video, to watch more videos related to personal development topics.